Sairam. In South India, in the state of Karnataka, there is a special temple town called Udupi. In Udupi, the temple is dedicated to Lord Krishna. But there is something very unique about this temple. As you enter the temple and go to the sanctum, you will not be able to have the darshan of Lord Krishna. Because the idol is turning its back on you. When you go to the main sanctum, you will see Krishna's back. In all the temples, the idols are installed facing the east. But here, Lord Krishna is facing the west, facing a wall. Why? It goes back to many centuries before when there was a great devotee of the Lord called Kanaka Dasa. Kanaka Dasa was a shepherd and because he is from a low caste, he was not allowed to enter this temple. And therefore, he would yearn and pine for Krishna and one day he decided that come what may I need to have my Lord Darshan and he goes to the temple. But even on that day, he stopped and told, get away. So along with his sheep and his fellow shepherds, he walks away. How wrong it is to turn away a person from God for whatever reason. If at all there is anybody who stops a devotee from entering the mandir of God, fie upon them. They are committing the greatest sin. But then it is also an opportunity for the Lord to manifest and show his glory. What happened that day at Udupi is jaw-dropping and awe-inspiring and thrilling. The idol of the Lord turned around and a brick in the wall of the temple was broken so that a gap was created through which Kanaka Dasa could have the darshan of his Lord. That window is called the Kanakana Kindi or the window of Kanaka and even to this day devotees have the darshan of Lord Krishna through the window that was created on account of the devotion of Kanaka Dasa. The Lord is beyond all castes and all distinctions. That's why Swami would say there is only one language, the language of the heart. There is only one religion, the religion of love. There is only one caste, the caste of humanity. This is the practice of the Lord, whether he is Lord Krishna in the Dwapara Yuga or our Sai in the Kali Yuga. April 1994, Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba, our beloved Bhagwan, our beloved Swami, was at his Brindavan Ashram in Whitefield, Bangalore. Thousands and thousands of people had gathered to have his darshan from all parts of the world. Among those thousands was one so called lowly couple. It was Ramaya a sweeper in the Sri Satisai boys hostel along with his wife. Now their daughter was getting married and they had come with an invitation card to hand over to Swami. They wanted Swami to bless the wedding and also invite him to be there. So they wanted to do it as a couple and we know right during Darshan the gents sit separate, the ladies sit separate. That is why Outside the Darshan Hall, in what we used to call back then as the Elephant Corner. You see, the Brindavan Hostel has these decorative elephants apparently holding aloft the hostel. So, at every corner these elephants sit and one of the corners which is closest to Swami's residence in Trai Brindavan, that was called the Elephant Corner and it was beyond the Darshan grounds, just beyond the Darshan grounds. So there. Ramaya, along with his wife, stood in bated breath with a fervent prayer in his heart. Swami, please come and accept this invitation. Bless my daughter. In his mind, he was thinking that I am after all a lowly sweeper. And Swami is the majestic Lord. He is the emperor of the universe. Will he have time for me? This is a wrong thought. Dear brothers and sisters, Swami always has time for all of us. 
it is we who don't have time for him we think that god will not come to us because we are lowly because we are male because we are female because we are uh, of a different caste because we are of a different nationality because we are poor all these are our man made obstructions and distinctions nothing matters for god for him all that matters is the yearning in the heart that's all that soul is what he seeks that's why swami would say vetuku chunnanu nenu vetuku chune unnanu meaning i'm searching and searching for anybody calling out with love there stood ramaya feeling a little diffident but he had put on his best hostel khaki uniform you know so that uh, he was at his prime looks and he wanted swami to come and bless him at exact 8 o'clock Swami steps out of the compound of Trai Brindavan. He is now going to walk a few meters to reach the Sai Ramesh Krishan Hall, where he grants darshan. And Ramaya is standing there, almost unable to breathe. Swami also stops for a moment and looks at him and his wife. The hopeful heart beats harder and louder. And as Swami continues to look, the heart begins to race faster and faster. But then. to his disappointment swami turns around and walks into the hall to grant darshan but then hope is always eternal right so he is hoping that as swami comes out after completing the darshan and bhajan he will possibly bless me but then that also doesn't happen swami has picked up a few people for interview and swami walks straight this time doesn't even look at ramaya walks straight into the gates of trai brindavan going to take interviews for these devotees it's around 8:30 8:40 and ramaya doesn't know what to do he is just standing there and even then he is having that hope because he doesn't want to go without giving the invitation to swami so he is hoping that you know maybe it happens that swami after the interviews goes out for a drive when he goes when his car passes by this path i will try to at least show the invitation let his eyes fall on the invitation at least with that hope he and his wife continue to stand at the elephant corner 95 95 the gates open and ramaya is wondering what happened where is the car there is no car and swami comes walking he comes walking straight to them and says ramaya and comes and receives the invitation card and then he says this is such an auspicious occasion you have come for today is monday ramaya 7:30 am to 9 am is rahu kalam the so called inauspicious time i was waiting i saw i saw you and then i thought okay let rahu kalam get over i will bless oh the bliss that ramaya and his wife had as they fell at swami's feet took namaskar washing his feet with their tears swami gifted them prasad swami blessed the wedding and then swami said i will send a sari in fact swami went back and selected four different silk sarees and gave it to one of the administrators and said go give these sarees to him swami all the four sarees no 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 let him pick whichever he likes swami whatever you give he'll be happy with it no no but i want to give him what he likes so tell him to pick and choose and if he likes all the four let him keep all the four it is that love that swami showered on ramaya ramaya thought that he is a sweeper but it was swami who did the sweeping swami swept away ramaya's heart and he pledged it to swami forever i don't think it's a coincidence that as i was stating that the power went off and on for me it is confirmation that swami is saying this is truth idi satyam swami is beyond everything he yearns for nothing other than our love and may we offer our love to him our love is his only concern nothing else matters that is why i always conclude with the prayer dear swami may the love that i have for you in my heart keep growing stronger every passing moment thank you jai sai ram